Hello friends, sharing with you today um, some of the basics about making kombucha. The first thing is how to say it. I think it was scary to start making it, so it's kombu, like a scare, boo, ghost, kombucha. Um, and that's just how I remember to say it because it was a new word to me. Um, I had been buying it at the store for years, uh, well about a year, and it's what, 7 to $10 a bottle for a bottle this size. So this is a brand name bottle. And you can see it's about the same size as the back ones that I make. And um, for literally a couple dollars, you can make six bottles um, You making it yourself versus, um, well, that is if you use your own juice um, or fruit. But otherwise, it can be really expensive, and I was drinking about a bottle a day, so that was a pretty, pretty um, expensive habit. <laughs> and it was more for health concerns, but so I decided to look up, look it up, and research it. And this is what I have learned from making it. It, it's really easy to make. I was really kind of scared because it was a fermenting process, but I have figured it out, and it's been awesome, and I've been enjoying it, and. My family started drinking it, and so I'm going to share some of the basics to help you save money in making it. First thing is start collecting bottles. I go to secondhand stores and yard sales, and every bottle you see here with these flip tops is all from secondhand stores or yard sales. So you can see I have a large variety. I actually have a tote full to the side that I'm not showing. I just wanted to show you all the different kinds of bottles that you can use. Now, you do not need to have these kind of tops. Um, pressure tops but I find it keeps the carbonation in and I know it's actually um, airtight <laughs> that sounds kind of weird it doesn't have to be because other people use these kind of bottles so I was going to show you you can collect these kind of bottles and use them these are these are vinegar bottles and that's that would be cute to give to a friend with a little tag on it these are olive oil bottles but they are also kind of cute so you can just collect odd size bottles and actually you can collect ones that other people like I donated I actually drank a different brand and I had the larger bottles um, and I donated them to a friend who was distributing some liquid minerals in them but I had probably 25 bottles and I didn't know what to do with them and I didn't want to throw them away so I did see online that other people have put it online that they were looking for them and other people have donated their used um, kombucha bottles as well. So you can get them fairly inexpensive. I like these ones. Um, you don't have to use them, but I'm going to share with you how to get them. So yard sales and secondhand stores like this one I bought recently for a dollar. Now I have looked them up online just to see what their the prices are and they're a couple dollars a bottle. So, but it's great because you can reuse them over and over and over again. Um, there are some, some things to be aware of. Um, the rubber gaskets will crack. Let me see if you can see the crack in that. Um, they get old and they get sticky and they, 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 they break down. Let me see if I can, let me show you. It's get, it's stuck. It kind of is hard stuck on there and they get like kind of hard and then they get rubbery. The rubber gets cracked and then you don't want to use them if they're cracked you can see it's got a crack in it so that one will go out but still I can show you very cheap I got these on Amazon for less than 10 bucks and there's 70 of them in there now be careful because when you're researching bottles and things like that the prices are hugely varied um, I almost bought one that had like 20 in it for $10 or $12 before I did a little bit more research and found these and they're the exact same thing from I'm sure from China the same company it's just the distributor um, who's selling them gives them for different prices so just do a little bit of research it saved me a little bit of money unless you don't care I mean 10 bucks 20 bucks 30 bucks it would probably cost me 30 something for this amount on the from the other guy but if you're doing it on a budget like I have been then check them out anyway so I just take off the old ones and put these on. Um, I do wash them before I use them. So that's the bottles. Um, I don't pay more than $2 a bottle, even for the big bottles. Um, I recently bought that one at a secondhand store for $1.50, I think. 
maybe two dollars the most i've paid for any of them is two dollars okay for kombucha you do not need the dark brewing bottles uh the these i use for medicinal ecf tea because it is light sensitive photosensitive but kombucha you you don't want to indirect sunlight when it's fermenting but it doesn't the light doesn't bother it it's a fermentation process and so it's okay so i save these blue and and uh amber bottles for or brown for ecf tea I do have a video on that, um, YouTube for that and a blog on the secret gratitude.com for the ECF tea if you're interested. Um, these look like alcohol bottles, but you can still use them. Um, except I wouldn't try and take them into a concert. <laughs> um, okay, so we've talked about bottles. Let's talk about the gaskets on these. Okay, so this is rubbery and it's thick. And you can see that it's, it's kind of a silicone. And then I showed you the rubber ones. So this rubbery one, but they get hard and they get sticky. In fact, I had to replace a couple today um, because I'm making more and more of this as I drink more and my kids drink it. So, um, and then there's this, the silicone. And then there's these kind, which I, I'm not gonna buy these kind anymore because I don't like the seal on these. Okay, so what happens is these are one piece I think this is that kind. So yeah, what happens is this is one piece. And so it's like glued onto here, the plastic, and then it comes up here and it's it's not really silicone-y. It is silicone, but it's more like a hard and it doesn't put as much pressure. So it, it's, oh, it's more plasticky. So when I put it on, it's not creating a good seal. It's just kind of plasticky. So I did buy this larger one that was like that and I cut the plastic this off and then I put a rubber gas, a uh, silicone gasket on it. So if you're desperate, you can do that and cut this one off. It just doesn't seal as well. And I just don't trust it um, to keep it from spilling. When, and I want, I like it when it gets fizzy. So I want it closed to build up that carbonation. So if you can avoid these kind that are plastic hard, avoid them. If you can't, cut the plastic off really well and put a silicone one on them. Okay, there's that. You just want a good seal so that it can ferment. Um, tea types. You can, I have had oolong tea and I use the organic uh, and green tea also. I have not tried the black tea. A lot of people say it's easier to make it with the black tea, but I think it's easy to make anyway. So uh, I would just choose organic. Okay, flavoring it. Uh, these ones are grape juice and kombucha, and these ones are pomegranate and kombucha. I didn't mix the flavors um, just because I wanted, I have never done pomegranate before and I wanted to see how it tasted. So how I flavor it is um, I make green grape juice or you can make pear juice, you can make apple juice, any kind of juice and you can leave chunks in it. When I, when I am pressing the grapes, I don't mind leaving the fluffy gunky stuff in the bottom because it just feeds the ferment. So if you're gonna, you, you can strain it and not have fruit pieces in it, but some people actually put fruit, little pieces of fruit in their kombucha to give it more added flavor. And you, before you bottle it, or, or you're gonna you like serve it, you can um, funnel it out, send it, what a, sift it out, um, put it through a coffee filter or something to get out the chunks of fruit, but I don't mind a little bit of that kind of pulpiness in them. You can see in the bottom of my, a little bit of grape. I don't mind that. Some people actually cut up pieces of fruit to put in. I, I have not done that because I get nervous about from um, the wrong kind of <laughs> mold growing or something like that. So the bottle types do make a difference in a little, little bit. So if you can see the tops of these are all different. So we've got a long thin one and then we got it kind of wider and then it goes thinner and then we've got like super skinny and goes up and then it's more wide and really quickly goes in and up. And then we've got kind of a taller one than the rest. Then we've got the square one that's open almost all the way to the top, which is kind of nice. I wish I could find more of those type. And then there's, you know, we're right back to the original one. So there are a lot of different bottle types. Um, I do like the the larger bottles. I keep them in the door of my fridge. 
Um, and so I'll talk about the fermentation process in a minute, but I still want to finish talking about jars. When it's fermenting in these bottles, this, these are foamy because I just barely made these. These ones have been fermented and I'll let you listen to them when I open them. It gives a pss, gas kind of a sound. So you can tell it's carbonated. So when it's up here like this, it's harder. Uh, a SCOBY will kind of, um, I'll, I'll talk about SCOBYs in a minute. Mushroom, um, uh, there's lots of different names for it. But they'll sit, sit up here and create a film. This foam will go away. But sometimes foam will create in when I first made a batch of this using my grape juice, um, I didn't mix it. So I poured the grape juice in first and you pour it into, you know, about here. Oh, it depends on how flavorful you want it. How much fruit juice you want to put in is up to you. But I put them into about here on the larger bottles. Um, but I didn't shake them. So when I poured the tea, the, the fermented tea in, so this was the flavoring, and then I poured the fermented tea in, it didn't mix very well, and it got right up here into the top, because I use a funnel, um, as you can see there. And it gets up to the top here, and it starts to um, thin, and then the air doesn't circulate as much, and the SCOBY forms up here, and then the rest kind of doesn't ferment the same as it would if it was mixed. And so I kind of got like brewing bubbles at the top and they, they look really scary, but they weren't moldy, they were just brewing bubbles. So you get more of a ferment, uh, like almost too much of a ferment at, at the, in the top up here, in the skinnier tops. So I like the open ones that come close quickly at the top um, because you get more room for the ferment. These ones up here, you just, it's, it's too congested in here. And so it gives a different kind of ferment. That's a weird thing to talk about, but I haven't noticed on any other videos when I was researching or anything, it talking about that. So be aware of the bottles that you're using. And if you're using these skinny top ones, I didn't listen to it myself. I was just trying to hurry and get it ready for the video. Um, fill them to where it starts to go up to the top. Like you can see when I was not doing a video, I was careful about that. I only took it to where it, that starts to close. Um, so this one, you know, here and this one kind of down here and this one down here. Um, it doesn't make a huge difference because I know that the ferment's going to be a little bit different. So I actually kind of shake them up <laughs> a little bit every day to, to get the air circulating in there. Um, when I'm doing the second ferment, it's not really a ferment. You're at this time, you're trying to get carbonation. It is a ferment, but you want the carbonation in this, in this stage of it. So just be aware that the bottle shape does make a difference. Also, it does make a difference on the fermentation. Let me show you in these jars right here. Oh, so the other ones I use palm juice. I've not ever, ever used this before. I drink it all the time, but I have never made the kombucha with it. So um, I just was saying you can use other juices. It's good to use organic or um, not sure, no sugar added. So... Um, but it will ferment the sugar anyway, and you add sugar when you're creating it anyway. So I wanted to talk about the gallon jars to ferment them. I also did not purchase any of my um, jars new. You can buy the gallon jars new, a lot of people do. Once again, I go to secondhand stores or yard sales. Um, I actually buy pickles in large jars as well. So most of these are pickle jars because I had a daughter that really loved pickles. So I have a lot of these gallon jars and I actually gave a bunch away before I started to make kombucha. But uh, there are people who use big plastic like beer menting containers, beer fermenting containers and stuff, which I am not really. Um, I like the glass and so I want to just keep using the glass. So just be aware that there are people who use other things. And also they say don't use the ones with the funnels, but I actually have seen people when I've watched the videos online that actually do use the ones with the funnel or the spigot, sorry. So if you look at the tops of these jars, you can see they're all very different sizes. So we've got a, a, a narrow mouth and then we've got a medium mouth and then we've got a large wide mouth. So be aware when you're buying your gallon jars at secondhand stores or online um, that they are different tops. And now it's really hard to get the SCOBY out and in this um, type of jar lid. So in this one, I can get it in and out pretty easily, but I am it's so much easier to be able to get it out of these super wide mouth 
sorry, this is the wide mouth, really wide mouth ones. You can see the difference. Look how much wider that is. So be aware when you're buying your gallon jars, try not to get the narrow lid, try and get the wide mouth lid because once the SCOBY gets large, let me move those so you can look at the SCOBYs. Okay, so I found this one at a yard, at a, a secondhand store for $2. It's a tea making one, an iced tea making one. But I loved how wide the top was. So I, I like those better. So what I use these for, the skinnier ones, is cooling the tea. It cools quicker if it's not in a metal pan and the air can get around and circulate around the jar. So I actually use the skinnier jars for cooling my tea. Um, just wanted to throw that in there before I forget. So you can use the skinnier jar lid, the lid jars. But just, I don't let the, them ferment in there because the scobies are super hard to get out of them. Okay, scobies. At first I was thinking, I like, what is this thing? It looks so disgusting. Um, you can see it's super thick. Let's see if I can get a better angle. There we go. Okay, this, this scoby I actually got as a start from somebody in, in town who actually makes it. And you can kind of see the layers of each time it's been used, it grows another layer. But this one is so thick that it sank to the bottom and then these thinner ones started creating on the top. And so each time you put it into a jar, I wanted to show you these on these fermented ones. Each time you put it into a jar, even with the fruit juice, so this is just the tea that's fermented, they create a new SCOBY on the top. Let's see if you can see it. And they're kind of a milky looking white. This one's not as good. I wanted to show you the ferment on this. this. It gets like these little brown and green things. And sometimes they have strings that hang down. Um, you can see it floating in there. Can you see it floating right there? They're just, they're, sometimes they sit across the top and they lay across the top. Sometimes they just sink down and kind of float around the middle. And sometimes they like this other one go to the bottom so um so it doesn't really matter whether they're on top or not because it will create one on top and you can see it's just kind of like a jellyfish so what i do with those ones is i i use this big thick one look at all those layers um and you can see the like strings hanging down and they look like they're alive and but that's normal and there's little dark ones too that that show up and it's chunky and thick kind of darker strings there's some and it's all okay as long as there's no green or mold you can kind of see there's brown and dark and like living strings hanging in those are all okay these ones are a little cleaner they're newer but what happens is when you move them they get so they're not flat anymore and then they kind of start if i can as i turn it they're all moving um they just start to kind of clump together that is okay too i just add this the new scoby to the old and put it in and start it new now this is your start so once you fermented it for about seven to ten days depending on your conditions in your kitchen it could can take less than seven or up to you know two weeks just depending on the conditions don't use soap if you can help it on the bottles um when you're washing them i just use really really hot water so I just dump the old scobies in and then two cups or so of the old fermented, um, the, once it's fermented for the two weeks or 10 days, take two cups of the liquid out. So this is what the liquid looks like. It smells like vinegar. You take that out and oh look, you can see the dark stuff in the bottom. Look at that, that looks so gross, but that is all just fine stuff. So um, as long as it's not green and it's not smelling bad, it's okay to have those chunkies in there. I just, if I'm gonna give it to somebody and I want it to look pretty, I'll just take those black ones out and leave the, you know, the little fine sediment. But if I'm drinking it, I think it's more yummy bacteria for my gut, so I don't sift it out for me, but there's some of that dark. So you take two cups of this and the SCOBY. You can touch the SCOBY, people say, I don't like to touch the SCOBY. Um, so I usually just use a sp two spatulas kind of, and, and then just pick it up and take it out of one and put it in the other. That's why I like the wide mouth jars. And then I just pick it up on a, a um, spatula kind of a thing, and then just put it in the new jar with two cups of the 
stuff that was in the ferment jar. Okay, then with the rest of it, I put, I told you the juice to about here, and then I pour the, the fermented tea, which is this, because I've just taken the SCOBY out of it, right? And it's in the, the new jar. These are the new jars waiting for the tea that I've just boiled to cool. And then this, I take this stuff, this was the jar they were fermenting in. These are the new jars. And I take it out of here and I pour, fill up the rest of them to where the lid is, you know, where it starts to con um, get smaller. And then I wipe the lid with clean cloth and then put the, the seal on. And then once the seal's on, um, I tip it upside down, shake it to get it all mixed because I've explained why on that. And then I seal it and you leave it on the counter for any, just depending on the condition of your kitchen. I leave it usually three days, two to three days. I check it in two days and some of them are really condensed, um, already carbonated and some are not. So this is what you want to listen for. This one looks, I need to replace this one. You can see it's, it's white from the juice getting sticky on it. Um, it still seals and you'll be able to hear that. But here's one I've already replaced with the new gasket. Uh, so listen to this. Did you hear that Psst, sound? Okay, that's what you're listening for. So maybe two days and I'll do this one too. And they will carbonate while they're in the fridge too. These have been in the fridge for um, since the last batch, so seven to 10 days. Well, they were on the counter for a couple of days, three days maybe, and then they've been in the fridge for seven days. So listen. So you can hear it's carbonated, right? So um, then I just put them back and I put them in the fridge, pull them out every day. I do not like drinking. You can see the SCOBY in there and the SCOBY's right there, I think in that one, or that's just a reflection that you can see the SCOBY's in that one right there. Um, so what I don't like drinking and it's a little bit slimy. So I always just pour it into a glass and then I'll just use a fork to take the SCOBY out of because a new SCOBY will form on these while they're on the counter for a few days. And like I said, if it has this, little foamy stuff and it looks kind of gross you can just pull that out because that's inside the scoby the scoby's right in there and that just it's what air gets trapped underneath it sometimes when you shake it or move it and so then it'll bubble up you'll get that in there so if you have any questions feel free to ask um super easy uh eight bags of tea in a gallon not quite a gallon of water because you're taking out two cups so this is a start so two cups so i fill it to about here when I I put hot water in the jar, put it in there, tea in the stainless steel pot with the tea, eight tea bags and a cup of sugar. And I bring it to a boil for a minute and then I let it steep until it's cool. Once it's um, off the boil and it's been cooled on the in the pan, I then pour it into these gallon jars and let it cool for three hours or so. And once it's completely cooled, then you can pour it into the jar with the SCOBY and then, um, oh shoot, hold on. I put this on top of it. So I put a clean cloth. I don't use paper towel because a lot of the paper towel is recycled toilet paper. So I just put this elastic over a clean cotton cloth. Um, this is just a clean dish cloth. Um, and so I just put that on there and then I put it, um, I just put it in my cupboard for 10 days and you can, take the top off and check it. I check it every couple of days and I make sure the scoby's looking healthy and for the, you know, it's, and then I smell it and you can taste it after seven days. I usually like it when it has a this very slight vinegary smell. So, um, and then once it's done, uh, I've shown you how to pour it into the jars and start a new batch. So keep out two cups and the scobies and then what happens is you can you can take a couple of the new scobies and put them in a new jar when there's less scoby in the jar it takes longer to ferment so um i usually build up some good scoby and then start a new jar so i could do three gallons if i wanted to and have them keep going and then i just add more and more and more and so you can have as much fermenting as you want it just takes longer the more tea you have with the different smaller scobies it just takes a little bit longer to ferment so just be aware that the bigger scoby for some reason it will help it ferment quicker feel free to ask any questions i hope i've given you some suggestions on quick 
uh, inexpensive ways to start this process and make some yummy kombucha and it's healthy for your gut and um, I feel a lot better when I do drink it. So check out my blog, thesecretisgratitude.com and I will post some pictures um, of how I do it and um, check out my YouTube channel for other videos on I do a lot of dehydrating and make a lot of a lot of different health things. I've got comfrey poultices and ECAC tea, grapefruit seed extract, lots of health videos. So check them out. Uh, if you like this, th give a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit notifications. And I appreciate you watching, and I hope you have a very, very blessed day.